Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 19. This is day six. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And today we're going to do seed tangles. I love seed tangles. Yes, so. It's, it's one of our no another one of our genuses. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, select a section, and I'm going to go in that upper middle part. But you can select any place, but, you know, this is where... This is where I'm going to go in that section. And we're going to, since this is a, a sort of a larger uh, palette, I'm going to use the uh, sort of larger, um, uh, you know, larger grid, larger seeds, larger tangles, and you'll see, you'll see what we're doing. And at the end of this, uh, we, we show a whole bunch of different interpretations. So you see I'm putting down these orbs, and we call these seed tangles because the, uh, well, these little initial shapes could look like seeds. Well, there are some round seeds, right? Yep. So it's like this could be a, a mustard seed. Or it could be a seed, like a... Or a like, pea. Like, yeah, but a, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they change size. Okay. <laughs> but you, you'll see I'm playing around with going behind not only the other tangles, but I'm going behind that little uh, crossbar there of the trellis, and I may go over others and under them, and these are the sorts of uh, decisions that you can make on the fly as you're doing these. So these, or this seed tangle is being done as a grid. So we're sort of uh, doing a, or we are doing a grid of these seed shapes that go all the way down. And because that area is getting a little bit smaller, I sort of made the, the seeds get smaller as we went. And I'm imagining, you know, where it would be and you just get to put them in, and you may have a little bit different space on yours. But in this case, I'm uh, going under the, that, that little gold trellis bar there. But on the others, I'm just going over it. So these sorts of decisions you can make uh, as you're doing it. And I'm going to put those same uh, seed sequence in this other section as well. And as you're doing this, you know, you, you can play around with, are you doing it in clockwise? Do you do it in counterclockwise? Usually I pick one and just sort of follow through follow on that. that. Yeah. But I can do it either way. I'm, I'm, I must be ambi- Circle-ish. <laughs> so once I have all of those in, on this left section, I'm going to put an S shape um, and just hook it on this, what we call a takeoff and land. So it sort of traces that first circle, and then when it comes down, it coasts to a stop and lands. So here we're going to sort of retrace that, take off, come around, and then land. And in that, and in that way, you've got a very sort of gentle transition going on from one to the other. So it's not an, an abrupt angle. It also sort of redefines the, the seed shape. Mm. And you can see like how the, the little... Uh, bumps or whatever in those seed shapes get smoothed out as you take off and land. So we're just going to do that on each one. And I, and I have in my mind that I'm going to cross in the space between those two seeds somewhat in the middle. So I've got, I have that going on in my mind that like, okay, I'm going to cross a bit in the middle. And that just 
just helps for the smoothness of the flight, so to speak, and the smoothness of the landing. And then just figure out how they might go behind the other elements there. So I'm actually drawing behind it to just to get a feel of where that might be. You know, drawing in the air behind it. So now we'll turn this 90 degrees and do exactly the same thing. Very zen tangly. This is one of those tangles that has two simple elemental strokes, the, the orb and the S-curve. And one of the things that I really like about this tangle is that it has a surprise or magical result. And it's that beautiful sort of like spinning, uh, like that circle that's got the corners whirling there. And it's so different than if you were to tell somebody to draw it. But in this way, you've created that, like, isn't that beautiful? Just by doing that, those two shapes in that sequence. Now we call this cadent, but what were the, do you remember the origin of this shape? There? Was it Celtic or what? Well, the origin of it was the um, uh, houndstooth pattern. Right. And we used to do this in squares. And once we had uh, come up with this idea, we started <coughs> doing it in circles and we called it cadent because houndstooth canine dental k dent but i almost um, the uh the traditional hound's tooth with the squares is totally different right. look, looking than this this is very elegant and i feel like there are patterns that look like this um but i don't know what the names of them mm -hmm. or the origins now on this other side i'm using the same seeds and we're going to do Huggins on this side. And the sequence of Huggins is the orbs, because the orbs are the same, but we're just doing a curve shape. <clears throat> and the secret of this, as you're doing it, is that the lines of these curves never cross the line of another curve. And so if you always do it, that way it ends up alternating. So you can see that as we go down this column, if you call that like an open parentheses, well, the next one below it is a closed parentheses and vice versa. Well, okay. I, I always think of it as the, uh, the old fashioned telephone handle. Mm, you know, right. That would include the, uh, the circles. Right. We're, so we're just taking this um, repeating shape of the curve and using the same takeoff and land principle as we go from one seed shape to the other. And then once we've done it all in one direction, we'll do the same thing and we'll turn the tile 90, uh, turn this sheet 90 degrees and remember the idea of those curves not crossing another curve. That tells us immediately that, okay, it has to be on that side. Right? And then this next one goes on the other side. They almost always alternate, right? Once you yeah. start. Now there's versions of Cadent and Huggins that we call crazy Cadent and Crazy Huggins. So if you look up on the uh, app and do a search for those, you'll see that they can, well, they can get pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. But on this, I like the idea of, of doing the same seed layout and then showing that by just changing the 
uh, elemental strokes that are used after that, you can come up with two totally different tangles. So I'm keeping that same theme of going under the that particular bar, but over the others. So what's happening here is you've got a uh, matrix, or you have this lovely reticula by working larger with these tangles. And we'll play a little bit with... Uh, with doing something in here, but this is setting up the potential of doing something uh, really creative that you may decide to put in. I just connected those there together. Pretty, huh? Right? So one of the options that we can do is create these, like, what we're calling, what are we calling these? Tethered. Tethered auras, auras. right. So they're tethered on both ends to the aura next to it, but then they, they aura and, and make sort of a, a very elegant little sweeping gesture. So I'm just putting those in each one of these in one direction and then turn my, uh, this beautiful piece of paper in the other direction and uh, do the same thing. And you might imagine adding more of these. You can add more on either side. You might have an inspiration of what goes in, in those like beautiful four-sided shapes that are like have that wonderful twist on them. I mean, you could even put another series of it, it would fit because it's so large. Yeah. Um, it would have more like a floral kind of start to get more like that, you know, more organic. Yeah, so I'm already thinking like, oh, when I when I go back to to do this, what I'll uh, what I'll add to it. Now on the Huggins, it suggests this really over and under uh Right, it's this this very weaving pattern. Well, these aren't tethered, by the way. So these right. are just a regular, uh, a regular aura. aura. Yeah. So I'm using this to like give the idea that perhaps, you know, which one is the over and which one is the under, or and this is like these stretchy ribbons that are have this like border on the edge of it. When we were first coming up with this whole idea, we uh, showed it to Martha, Martha's mother-in-law, and uh, her name is Huggins, and she showed us this tangle that they used to do in, what was it, like grade school or right. something like that, and we thought, oh, this is just absolutely perfect. Well, at the time, she, she used it, this pattern because yeah. tangles weren't in, in, invented yet. So we like, okay, well, we deconstructed it, and uh, it's it's such a wonderful thing, particularly when you go crazy with it. So we put all of these auras in. And I loved that, I have to say this, I, I love that we call it Huggins because it looks like one um, element hugging the other mm. so it was so you know usually I, I don't go with descriptions but because right. her name was Huggins you know it worked out just well so I'm switching to my 08 here and I'm just going to uh, fill in those seeds those orbs and emphasize like okay the, these elements are weaving together and maybe it's dark in the background there So that just adds a, a whole different contrast to it and a whole different look. And on this side, on the cadence side, I'm going to fill in sort of. So I'm going to start not touching that orb, 
but do a couple rounds of the circle going round and round and leave like a little highlight. So I've sort of got a nice effect. And we'll just go through all of those and do that. And of course the little ones, you know, just, just doing a dot. Just got little. Just got little, yeah. And so there we have today's edition of Seed Tangles for you to, for your inspiration. And uh, let's take a, a look at what, how everybody else here took that and what they did with it. And here's Julie filling in that space. I love how each one has this character that's developing, right? And, and particularly because the backgrounds are all so different. Beautiful. And this is Martha. Love the flowing nature and the comparison of those two tangles next to each other, knowing they started with the same, uh, the same setup. Well, she did the opposite. With right. The, the, the seeds. And this is Molly's. And you can see how she's already laying the groundwork for using these as some uh, reticulate for, or like a framework for other tangles. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you can take really great inspiration from some of these. And this is Maria's. And you can see how Maria has already started filling in on the Huggins there and done it a little crazy. A little bit, yeah. So thank you all. Thank you for being with us on this day. And we look forward to seeing you on the next day and seeing what you create. And thanks for playing along. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>